What's up, everybody? Z Swigs here for November 28th, 2017, the week before Curse of Osiris and week number 13 for Destiny 2. As you can see right here, this is the last week for season one. So if you haven't collected everything you want out of Bride Engrams, this is the last week to do it. Clan progression is going to be reset, so it's your last week to get to rank six in your clan. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in a bit. But, just as a reminder, this is the last week before Curse of Osiris. So, uh, there's a rumor going around that maybe the thing to do is, when you do your milestones this week, don't turn them in. In the past, if you don't turn in your milestones, they just auto-decrypt at the reset. You don't lose anything, but you auto-decrypt. The working theory here is that because the reset moves to noon Central Time next week, 9 a.m. Pacific, or 10 a.m., sorry, 10 a.m. Pacific, math is hard, um, the re weekly reset will move to 10 a.m. Pacific next week. That means that your milestones will decrypt at 10 a.m. Pacific, which is also the exact launch time of Curse of Osiris. Why would you do this? Well, the working theory is that if you're... Uh, milestones auto decrypt at Curse of Osiris launch time, it's possible that they will decrypt into the higher new light level up to 330, and they could possibly contain Curse of Osiris gear. So if you're maxed out on all three characters and uh, you've got basically all the armor and weapons in the game that you want, like me, you, there's no really any harm in, uh, in waiting for the milestones to auto decrypt at the reset next week. So if you want to do that, feel free. If you're not max light, there's not really any reason other than the possibility of getting new armor um, a week ahead of time, basically. Um, but if you're max light, I, I think it, there's a good chance because the light level cap or the power level cap will raise that you could get above 300 gear uh, twice, essentially, next week by just waiting for the auto, uh, the auto decrypt at the reset, which moves to noon central, 10 a.m. Pacific, um, next week when Curse of Osiris launches. Other than that, that's about all the new news because the Nightfall this week is the same as it was in week 11. We just had it two weeks ago. It is Sabbath and Song. And the modifiers are the same. Momentum and Time Warp Anomalies. If you've done this one before, feel free to skip ahead five or six minutes because it's the exact same thing. If you haven't done this one before, well, you're in for a treat. It's one of the hardest nightfalls in the game. Um, it's, it's, uh, and, and we just did it two weeks ago. I think this is the third or the fourth time we've done this exact nightfall. And it's still pretty difficult. There's, there's some tricks to get through it. Um, let me explain the modifiers. The first one is momentum. Essentially what happens here is when you're standing still, you, you, get the, you get the inertia debuff, which stops your health from regenerating automatically. You need to start running for a second or so to get the momentum buff, which will then allow your health to start regenerating. Once you start running and your health starts regenerating, you can stop running. You don't need to continually run to regenerate your health. Although if you do... It's basically like standing in a healing rift. Your health will continually regenerate as long as you're running, so you can run past men, you know, the bad guys, for a little bit and still heal pretty easily. But as soon as you stop, health stops too. you got to run for another second or so to regenerate your health. So that is what momentum is. It is... Uh, it's it's not too terrible. You can you can find yourself in a sticky situation if you if you if you uh, don't break yourself of the habit of hiding behind cover because you do uh, you do need to run to regen. Of course, uh, uh, doesn't affect ability. So if you do have healing rifts, you can still heal from that. For example, so momentum is the modifier as well as time warp anomalies. Uh, these are little oracle-like things. If you played the Vault of Glass in Destiny 1, you know what those are. Otherwise, they're kind of little conflux, uh, blue glowing little conflux cubes. You shoot them a few times, they add 30 seconds to your timer. They are statically placed, meaning that if you, uh, if you, there's maps all over the internet and there's YouTube videos all over the internet showing the locations of every single one of these anomalies. They never move, they're always in the same place, so if you have to run this nightfall a few different times, uh, you can kind of memorize where the anomalies were and get a lot of time. This Time Warp Anomalies is actually really nice. I like it. Um, it does add a ton of time to the uh, timer, which you're going to need because this Nightfall is not easy. Some strategies here. Um, I, I always I recommend the Wardcliff Coil Merciless here more than probably any other strike in the game. Most of the enemies, especially the Knights, have Arc Shields. The Wardcliff Coil will one-shot these Knights. 
and uh, you you can pretty much always pick up a heavy brick from them because they're mostly all yellow bars. So running with the Wardcliffe is a great way to get through the mobs because uh, mob control is going to be the number one thing here. There are several encounters where the mobs are the hardest part, um, especially when you're running orbs or there's this uh, section where you're fighting a bunch of ogres. All right, the mobs are the are the hardest part. The word cliff will make short work of those. Also, things like uh, striker titans. Uh, a tether is very helpful, especially if you're running Orpheus rig. You can tether up mobs of enemies pretty easily and get full super uh, right away. And then you can uh, you could storm call and create more orbs and and you can basically feed off orbs from each other here. That's also a great strategy. And of course, the, the ward cliff coil glitch for the boss room, where as long as you have one brick of heavy ammo left in your ward cliff coil, if you switch to any other heavy weapon, in this case the merciless is what I'm recommending, you'll have full ammo. So generally, what I do is I run in, I shoot all but one of my ward cliffs that I have left into the boss, change over to merciless, shoot almost shoot as many merciless as I can into the boss. And then change back to the ward cliff, pick up a new heavy brick, switch back to the merciless, have full ammo again, and repeat. If you do that, you especially if there's two or three of you shooting him with the merciless, you can pretty much get rid of the boss pretty simply, which is great because this uh, this this boss fight is also not easy. Like I said, Sabbath and Song, it's it's not as hard as uh, as you may think. The modifiers make it a little easier because the the time limit isn't such a problem. But add control is definitely what you want to do here. Expect to die a couple times. If you've never done this one before, I would uh, I would recommend not getting frustrated. Prepare on running it a couple times to to get to get a hold of where the anomalies all are and to uh, kind of learn where the enemies spawn and uh, placement for you, so you don't get shot so easily because you do have to run around like a madman in order to regenerate health. So it is Sabbath and Song. If you want to go back, I mean, there's more analysis. Uh, I mean, it's the same analysis, but maybe I say it a different way in week 11 and then a couple weeks before that even because we've had this exact nightfall several times. So it is Sabbath and Song this week, and uh, we've had this before. Have fun, guys. If you do the prestige nightfall on this, uh, teach me your ways. It's, it's too hard for me. Um, this is a tough nightfall, but I do believe it is a fun one. I just wish it wasn't a repeat. So uh, that is the nightfall for this week. Let's head to the tower and see what else we got going on. As we load into the tower, I'll give you the raid rotation for this week. It is pools, gauntlets, dogs, and then callus. So it is the bathers, the game show, the doggos, and callus. The challenge is the pools, which I'm sure you know what it is by now, but I won't spoil it here just in case you don't. So again, it is it is the the bathing, the royal, the pools, the royal gardens, or sorry, the game show, the gauntlet, then the royal gardens, and then Callus, with the challenge being the pools. Tess Everest. What's up, girl? This is the last week to buy or get most of the exotics that she offers in her emblems. So, this does not apply to ornaments, but it does apply to emotes. With that said, she's not selling any. You're the guardian. I'm pretty sure this is a vanilla emote. She's also selling flowing dance. Which I believe she sold before, but I'm not totally sure. So no exotic emotes. So if you're looking forward to salty like me, well, the irony is there that I'm too I, I'm salty about there being no salty, and I have no way to express my saltiness. It's very sad. I hope they drop for out of an engram here. We've also got Skedaddle, a sparrow, kind of a cool one with the color blocks, and uh, it's, it's a fun one to shade. We've also got Captain Nemo as the ship. This one's got like some cool lettering on the side. That's kind of a cool ship. And then we've got the Leonid MV, the Titan ship. If you want to look like a baller everywhere you go, or you just want to be a hipster and drive the Titan ship while you're a warlock, you can do that too. We've also got Break the Dawn, which turns your merciless white. I really like this emblem, uh, uh, ornament, sorry. I think it's really cool. And then we've also got the highly requested Red Dwarf Sunshot ornament, which I think makes the Sunshot look like Siva. Really cool. I like this one. Um, you can pick those two up. I don't. These do not reset, so if you don't want to spend your bright dust on them, you certainly don't have to. They're both right there. She's also selling the Optimacy legs. This is another set of gear that will go away. This is your last week to get any Optimacy. So if you're missing the legs, and only the legs, congratulations, you got a full set. Otherwise, you got to hope for good luck with bright engrams. Haven't worn any of the past few weeks that this, is, this will be the last week, so... Uh, if you need the Optimacy legs, they are for sale this week. We've also got two of Diamond Shell, which is a pretty sweet-looking shell, if you ask me. I like the spikes on the back of it. And then we've also got the Vertical Shell, which, uh, you know, 
It's a tall shell. Looks pretty cool. And then we've got the Suros Modular Shine, which is a pretty fancy uh, thing. It makes you white and red. It's a, it's a nice-looking shader. Throwback to D1, in my opinion. And then we got the beautiful pink and purple Dawn and Dusk, which is kind of a shinier pink. And then the even prettier, in my opinion, Nebula Rose, which I'll be buying a few of because it is the shader that I'm wearing right now. This is actually what my Warlock looks like. The Nebula Rose. Gorgeous. And then, of course, Fire Team's Medallions, which uh, boost XP, or do they? We won't get into that. But they're there for you for 50 Bright Dust if you need them. Fire Team Medallions. Ikora Ray. Now, disclaimer mm -hmm. as in always, her stuff rotates at a different time. Now, I do believe it will rotate at noon central, which means that next week, perhaps, possibly, maybe, when I cover the reset at noon next week, her stuff will actually be accurate, and these 14 weeks <laughs> of covering the wrong meditations will finally pay off. Maybe. But here we go. Right now, she's got Fury. Helbacora used the Warmind on IO to learn more about the Almighty. Unbroken. Find through most of the Unbroken. And Payback. Time for Zavala's Great Entrance. This is the mission with the tank. This is the one where you infiltrate the ship and kill through most of the Unbroken. And this is the final mission on IO where you fight the big tank and Minotaur. All three of these are uh, more, more difficult than usual, but I think they're all fun missions. Um, and they will rotate. Uh, tomorrow they will be different. So if you're watching this early on Tuesday, you can actually do six, six meditations a week and get more Ikora tokens. Um, I, I, I hesitate to say this is the last week you'll be able to do that, but it could be the last week you'll be able to do that. With the reset time change next week, maybe she'll only offer the three a week. So uh, these will change, but for the time being, you, have, uh, you can do six of them if you catch them early enough. So that's the meditations that Ikora is offering this week and the last person we're going to see is old Cade so six Guardian. he is uh he's my favorite because he takes a lot of my glimmer and then gives me one blue mod i'm just kidding Cade. i love you but he hey, is hey. offering treasure maps as always so let's pick them up all yours friend the flashpoint this week is on the edz bing bong bong ba bang ba bang biggity all right, so we've got two over here, two up here, and I'm guessing the other one. All right, it's over here in the in the tunnels again. Cool. All right, so let's go hunt down all of these treasure chests in the EDZ, which is the flashpoint for this week. First chest we're going to get is this one right here in the Tross Land. This place is full of old containers. Don't bother raiding them all. I already did. They're all filled with shoes mountains of golden age footwear and not a thing in my size this one is one of the easier ones you're going to get today just load it to trust land jump on your sparrow and just go straight head towards the salt looks the salt mines you've all been there a million times it's where i like to go after the crucible all right you could you could sparrow through here if you have elite skills and also if you were you know using slang from 2005 and uh just keep going straight right through this first brick wall here and you can see Cade's chest sitting up there. So just jump and here is Cade's first chest. Alright, Prophet Snow, dude. So lucky. Second chest we're gonna get is this one over here in Mavic Square. I've been all around this system, seen all sorts of transports, but nothing with the resiliency of this old Golden Age rust bucket I found in the EDZ. Use it as a grab-and-go spot for years. So head to the Tross Land again, jump on your Sparrow, and instead of going straight, we're going to hang to the right over here. And then we're going to take a left and head towards Mavic Square. You've probably been here a couple times when you're doing the Mita Quest. Just uh, keep following the road. Don't, don't hit, you know, things. Go through this little hallway and jump off and up. Hey, this is a picture of my grandmother. What do you guys think? I'll keep going. All right, once you get to Mavic Square, take a left. It's inside this bus over here. And this is a very trolly spot. Um, here's why. Generally, as you know, see, there's Kate's chest. Generally, as you know, you're supposed to jump on the chest because they may or may not be glitched, meaning that the stuff falls kind of down inside them. Well, in this case, you uh you can't. You gotta go around to the back. If you can figure out how to get in here through these windows, 
You're a better man than I. I tried for a little bit. I couldn't fit in here. And even if I got in here, I probably couldn't get out. So hopefully it's just, uh, you know, it, it gives you things anyway. So uh, there we go. R Lucky rabbit's paw. Cool. Are you ready for the easiest chest of all time? Load into the gulch and it's right here. They thought they had me dead to sights backing me down this cliff, but I could see some fellow hunters sparrowing in from the highway. Classic. So I sparked up a little golden gun and bought my guy some time. I know I dropped something good in that one. So you load into the gulch, turn left. Hey, what's that? It's Cade's chest. So uh, from the load ins by the gulch, just kind of jump. And boom, <laughs> we found Cade's chest. <laughs> Nothing good, though. He lied. Fourth chest we're going to get is this one right here. Stash plenty of loot up at the old mill in the EDZ. To scare Dregs off, I'd throw on some old Festival of the Lost masks and make him think the place was haunted. So load into the gulch. You can also get here from the sludge, but I think the gulch you know, will be easier because you're here already for the third mass. So just go straight down into the gulch proper like if you were doing all the public events that happened in the gulch. Watch out for interceptors that are trying to shoot you down, apparently, and just keep going straight. You can follow the road as well, but... Personally, I like launching. We'll drive past where the injection rig is, underneath this sign right here. And you can see the old mill. Kate's chest is up there. I think the easiest way to get here is to turn back around and go back to that sign we drove under. All right? Here, there's a ways to get up onto this hill. So if you jump up onto this rock here, and then you can kind of jump straight from that rock and then just kind of wiggle your way around this thing. Oh god, I, t I took it too far. Oh, it's all right, it's salvageable. And here is Cade's fourth chest. Oh, there's my mod. I was wondering if I were gonna get mods this week. Yay. Fifth and final chest we're gonna get is this one right here in the tunnels. New lead from Hawthorne. Not really much to go on. Something about a fan? I know I must have a lot of them, so if you see one down in the EDZ, maybe ask them. I don't think that's the kind of fan that Hawthorne was talking about, Cade. Load into the sunken isles. You can also get here from the gulch, but I think the drive is much shorter from the sunken isles. Hop on your sparrow, head left and go into the tunnels. It's this big tunnel-shaped hole in the wall that leads you into the tunnels. And you're gonna follow them until you get to the big underground cavern. <sighs> you can do cool sparrow tricks and stuff while you're driving, you know, or you can tell stories or, you know, play the alphabet game, you know, whatever to do to pass the time during these long drives. Like I said, it's actually a longer drive from the gulch, so, uh, yeah. And here we are in the tunnels. Just uh, keep going straight. You want to head across the bridges here. You can ignore most of the bad men. You're going too fast. They don't. They don't really bother you. And then hang a left. And look, over here on the side, here's some of Cade's biggest fans. You get it? And down underneath one of these fans is Cade's fifth chest. So it can be kind of tricky to jump underneath this thing. I like warlock jumps because you can kind of glide. You just got to get underneath the fan and right to the chest. All right, another week, no exotics for Z-Swigs. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you find the chest this week. Remember, next week is Curse of Osiris. I hope you're going to like it. I hope Bungie delivers with some great, fun times for Destiny 2 expansions. It's going to be great. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you found the chest. If you did, leave a comment below. Hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. If you like watching Destiny 2, I'm going to be playing Curse of Osiris live at twitch.tv slash zswigs all next week. So come hang out with me, dudes. I love you. Thanks for your support. And I'll see you next week. Later time, by the way. Reset starts at noon central time next week, 10 a.m. Pacific. It's no longer in the middle of the night. So these videos will be a little later because the reset will happen a little later. So there you go. I'll see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. Hey guys, it's me, Z Swigs. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting, informative, and most of all, entertaining. Please leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Also, come hang out with me every day over at twitch.tv slash zswigs. We're playing fun games over there. I love all of you, and thanks again for all your support.